This is lesson 2.3, and today we're going to be talking about atomic weight. So our goal today is to understand what atomic weight is and also to be able to calculate it. So let's jump right into things. Now, I want to review the subatomic particles. Now, what are they again? That's right, your protons, neutrons, and electrons. And your protons, as we've already learned, they're positively charged and they're in the nucleus and they have a charge of positive one. So it's not just a charge of positive. The number is important. It's positive one. The mass of a proton is one dA. Now, what is that? What's a dA? dA stands for Dalton, and it's named after John Dalton. So the units for the mass of a proton, neutron, and electron are in dA, or Daltons, which is exactly the same as AMU, or U. So atomic mass units are the same as Daltons, and you may see dA, U, or AMU. They're all exactly the same thing, okay? So the mass of proton is one Dalton, and the mass of a neutron is also going to be one Dalton. They're all approximately the same. Protons and neutrons have approximately the same mass. Now, your neutrons are uncharged particles in the nucleus, and so they have a charge of zero. And if you recall, your mass number is your number of protons plus neutrons, and that's because most of the mass of an atom is going to be composed of protons and neutrons. And so each of them has a mass of about one. And so the approximate mass of one particular atom is going to be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Now, the electrons themselves do have mass, but their mass is so, so light that it doesn't really contribute to the total mass very much. Now, it does contribute to the mass of an atom a little bit, but not that much. So you can see here that the mass of an electron is 0 0.00055 Dalton. So it's more than 1,800 times lighter than a proton or a neutron. So very, very light. Your electrons are not in the nucleus. They're flying all around, and they have a charge of negative 1. All right, They're, the charge of an electron is essentially exactly the opposite of a proton. So I'd like you guys to remember the mass and charge of each of these subatomic particles. Now, I would also like you guys to familiarize yourselves with the periodic table. The periodic table has lots of important information about all of the different elements organized into one sheet. Really, really nice. And so I want you guys to learn some of this stuff on the periodic table. First of all, let's look at in this one particular box, we have the element beryllium kind of blown up so we can see it a little bit better. Each of these boxes, each of these squares or rectangles represents one single element. All right. And so we have here beryllium, which has the symbol BE. Your chemical symbols, typically the first letter is going to be uppercase. The second letter is going to be lowercase. The chemical symbols are going to be one or two letters long. And I would like you guys to memorize the chemical symbols of the most common elements. I'm going to give you guys a list of about 45 elements. And I'd like you guys to learn the chemical symbols and chemical names for those. Now, the top number here is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And that's important because that defines the element. The number of protons defines the element. So if you have four protons in one particular atom, you know that thing is beryllium. The number of neutrons and electrons can vary, but if something has four protons, it must be, or it is, beryllium. The other number is the atomic weight, and that's what we're going to focus on today here. The atomic weight, as you can see, first of all, is not a whole number. Unlike the mass number, the atomic weight is not a whole number. And let's just pause there and think about that for a second. Well, why isn't the mass number listed on the periodic table? All those numbers are atomic weights. Well, what about the, the mass number? Why don't we list that on the periodic table? All right, think about it for a second. The reason is because the mass number is specific to one single isotope. It's not specific to an element. So one element might have many different mass numbers because most elements have multiple stable isotopes. And if they have more than one stable isotope, that one particular element is going to have more than one mass number associated with it. The atomic weights are nice because what they do is they average all of the different masses of all the different stable isotopes for a particular element. So if we look at the periodic table, we'll find all these different atomic weights are sometimes not even close to a whole number. For example, chlorine, which we find over here, element number 17, 
right, has an atomic weight of 35.45. That's not even close to 35 or 36. It's almost right there in the middle because the atomic weight is a weighted average of all of the different isotopes of a particular element. Now, atomic weight is sometimes erroneously called atomic mass. Atomic mass is different. Atomic mass is for one particular atom. The atomic weight is for all of the atoms of one particular element. And the atomic weight is sometimes also called the relative atomic mass, but not atomic mass. The atomic weight of an element is the average mass per atom in the sample. Because naturally occurring elements often contain more than one isotope, the atomic weight of an element is the average mass of all the isotopes weighted for the abundance of each isotope. Now, it turns out that the atomic weight is the exact same number as the molar mass, which is really, really convenient when we're calculating, let's say, the moles of one particular sample. You can just use the atomic weight on the periodic table, which is equal to the molar mass of that element too. Now, the thing is that they represent two different things, but the number is the same. So the atomic weight is your average mass of atoms in a sample. So it's for one atom, but it's the average mass of one atom in a sample. And that is in AMU or Dalton's. The molar mass, however, is the mass of all of the atoms when we're talking about a mole of atoms. So if we have a mole of atoms, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And what's the mass of all those atoms and that mass in grams? And it turns out that the molar mass is equal to the atomic weight. They're two different quantities, but they have exactly the same number. Now, the atomic mass is different. Why is that? Because the atomic mass is the mass of one single atom. And the atomic weight might actually not equal the atomic mass of any atom in the sample, right? Because if you have two different isotopes, the atomic weight is going to be somewhere in between the two different masses of those different isotopes. So atomic weight, atomic mass are different, but the atomic weight and the molar mass are the same number. Now, how do we calculate atomic weight? If we're given the isotope mass, which you can look up on Wikipedia, they've got a table of all those different things, and also the isotope abundances, all you need to do is essentially you multiply the atomic mass times its abundance, and you add that together for all of the different isotopes. So if you have two isotopes, this equation is going to work out, right? So if you have two naturally occurring isotopes, you take the first isotope mass, multiply by its abundance, which is a percent, and then add that to the second isotope mass times its abundance. And if there's a third isotope, you would multiply the third isotope's mass times its abundance, and you just add those all up. And that's going to give you the atomic weight. So let's go ahead and calculate this for chlorine. Now, chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes, right? They are chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. So if we want to calculate the atomic weight of chlorine, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to multiply the mass times abundance of chlorine-35 and add that to the mass times abundance of chlorine-37. So we're going to basically just add together the products of those. Now, before we do that, we need to realize that the abundance here is going to be typically reported in percentages, which might not always be calculator friendly. So if your calculator can do percentages, that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to need to turn these abundance percentages into decimal form. And we do that very, very easily simply by taking this decimal point and moving it two spots to the left. And so the decimal form of that abundance is going to be 0.7577. And the decimal form of this one is going to be 0.2423. Remember, all we've done is just take that decimal point and moved it one, two spots to the left. And so these abundances are still the same. It's just that in the decimal form, it essentially says that one is 100%. Right? And so this is a fraction of one that chlorine 35 is in the entire sample of that element. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Oh, and one more thing before we actually do the calculation. What if I don't tell you the abundance of one of these elements? Let's suppose I didn't tell you this 24.23%. Could we still solve the problem? And the answer is yes. The reason for that is your abundance 
is always going to be equal to a total of 100% or a total of one. As long as you know that these are the only two isotopes of a particular element, the total must be one or 100%. So that total abundance is going to be that. And so, for example, if I only know this 0.7577, I can simply go to calculate this one minus 0.7577. 7, 7, and you'll do that in your calculator and you'll find it's equal to this. Let's go ahead and verify that. So 1 minus 0.7577 and lo and behold, look at that. It's equal to 0.2423. So the total abundance is always going to be equal to 100% or 1. And so you guys, if one of these abundances is missing, you can always calculate that. Now, let's go ahead and do the calculation for atomic weight. Your atomic weight is going to be equal to the mass of the first isotope. So that's 34.96885 times its abundance, which is 0.7577. And we're going to add that to the mass of the second isotope. So that's going to be 36.9659 times its abundance, which is 0.2423. All right. And we're going to add that all up. Let's do that in our calculator. You can do that in one step in the calculator. So that's going to be 34.96885 times 0.7577 and plus 36.9659 times 0.2423. Hit enter, and that's your final answer. 35 point, well, now how many sig figs do we have? We have only four significant figures based on the abundances, which have only four significant figures. So we're gonna round this off to 35.4. Five, which if you look up in the periodic table is indeed the atomic weight of chlorine. Okay. So you guys can do that for a couple of different sample problems that I'm going to give you guys. Um, but this is the way we're going to calculate your atomic weight. All right. See ya.